Hi, we're here live on the floor of GTC 2024, and I'm thrilled to be with a good friend of ours, Rafiq, who is doing amazing work in generative AI and art. Welcome. Hello, it's so great to be here again. Great to be with you again. This is actually our second time doing a, a talk. Our first one was uh, back at MoMA and with your first major installation at the museum there, and I think what inspired me so much is watching everybody to go look at it and they just became mesmerized and they even had to change some of the installation to put in more seats because people spent so much time. Can you tell us about that? Which is again so grateful to be together in these dialogues because MoMA piece, which is on Spreewise, was a very important artwork for the history of art making. Also thanks to our collaboration that the artwork was running on an extremely uh, complex system and DJ Station was behind the scenes running the artwork all the time, ever changing. And the artwork uh, four times extended its <laughs> display wow. time yeah, of yeah. popularity and we received close to three million people and the average viewing experience was around 38 minutes. Wow. Uh, but most importantly, artwork went to the permanent collection and became the first generative AI ever collected by MoMA. Wow, congratulations. And how did that inspire where we're at now with your new your uh, AI nature model where you're taking this beautiful imagery of nature and really transforming it into new visions of what it can do? I think we are in a very exciting time with AI research, especially large language models are transforming our imagination. But when I think about nature, which is the most important thing we have and the most intelligent thing we have as humanity, I believe that we may need a new perspective because current AI research focuses on human intelligence, human reasoning, which is very important, but I think nature needs a new new, new perspective. And, and of course, there is no better partner than NVIDIA and this research, we decided to bring this complex imagination to, the, to this exciting new height. Uh, large nature model is our uh, kind of a speculation statement about yeah. how the nature should be important and the core research around it is very important. Incredible. And you know, at NVIDIA, we're a platform company, so I'd love to hear about how our hardware, but even more importantly, with our partners. You worked with Getty Images, you worked with our software platform, Picasso. How did that all come together to, to make this possible? So, last eight years, thanks to our very first collaboration, I guess, to Gamescom and many others, we have a lot of local uh, physical support, DJ stations, we have A6000 recently. So, all these gears are helping us so much to work locally with big data but also the ecosystem around not only hardware, software like um, you know, Edify and the Picasso systems, we were able to like collect around half billion images of open source nature data from Smithsonian, Natural History Museum, Natural Geographic. These are all open source and ethical uh, collected data sets and then we were able to clean them, sort them, curate them, tag them, all locally. All these systems have been all done in locally. And then, of course, when the time comes to go next level, thanks to the uh, Getty Image Foundation model team, they invited us to also create this new um, kind of a joint the forces. So we brought these uh, clean and sorted data sets, and then the team allowed us to fine tune the original model and turn it into this nature focused model. Uh, incredible research, and the results are fascinating. So you used the Getty model and then you fine tuned it with the Picasso yes. platform. Incredible. Now, artists, as we know, are able to provide these perspectives that others may not consider. How do you bring that to technology leaders to describe what you want to use technology for in your medium? I think, first of all, I'm again deeply grateful for NVIDIA partnerships across the years. I think this is truly art, science, and technology communication across different like dimensions. And this brings us a new perspectives, new heights that doesn't exist, new breakthroughs in art making. And, and I know that it is um, very hard work across many parts of this technology world, but having the artistic sometimes imagination and perspectives ask these different questions. Sometimes maybe science doesn't need that question, but man imagining the world beyond us, uh, this brings new perspectives. I think in our partnerships and collaborations, we always find that these aha moments yeah, yeah. that never asked before. So I'm very grateful that these dialogues opens up new type of imaginations. And the installation you have here, which I'm still mind blown by because it's, it's so informative on data from the rainforest, which I thought was amazing, and then it's so beautiful to look at, but you also can smell it. 
Yes. Tell me about that. So I think the future of AI, generative AI, will be hopefully beyond just text to image, text to sound, text to video. So as an artistic imagination, I believe that scent has a profound experience on our life as a memory form. So four years ago, I started working with scent data and AI imagination. But of course, we thought that this can be a great place to first speculate this new world. So our AI research allowed us to create text to image, text to sound, text to video, and text to scent. Wow. <laughs> so we were able to see here in GTC an AI dreaming all the flowers of Amazonia. Yeah. And we were able to smell these possibilities of like new AI dreams. Uh, all the more reason why people have to be here on the floor to experience this. So how does this collaboration between artists, researchers, and ultimately the businesses foster a culture of innovation and creativity in the tech industry? What drives that? I think it's a fascinating place because inspiration really happens in the dialogues. And I think sometimes we're in our silos, we're in our like corners, in our grouped environments. But whenever this like interdisciplinary imagination starts, questions get different yeah. and possibilities goes beyond. Of course, possibilities come with responsibilities, respecting each other and understanding each other. There's lots of like um, uh, ch challenges, of course, across different parts. But when that clicks together, that harmony, yeah. uh, that brings fascinating results. And so what do you want people to come away with when they sit and experience this and they, and they take all of this in? What is your hope when they walk away? I think the world is changing so rapidly. And I think as an artist, I found myself as a role to demystify AI, explain AI, and also show how the systems work. Because the more we understand those systems, the less fears we have, the more perspectives we have. So that's why here in GTC, our installation shows us how to like, what is the role of data it is inside, right. how the like AI model re reflects to us, what are the other possibilities, such as stepping inside these new worlds. So we try to educate in inspire and really not just only look at beautiful pixels and beautiful uh, algorithms, but really question it and understand it uh, in a safe and secure space. And what do you say to those people that are uh, afraid of generative AI? They, they look at it as, as a new medium, they may not understand it, and they, like, how do, you, how do you answer those questions when they come to you and say, is this really art? I think the best answer is really understanding the medium. Because as an artist myself, like last eight years, uh, collecting data, curating data, sorting data, training models, I think this is the, one of the best way of owning the narrative of the work. And it creates these much more possibilities, but also let me understand exactly where the pixels are coming from, where the voxels are coming from. Yeah, yeah. That awareness, I think, is very important. And I do believe the more we explain these tools, I hope the more open source culture goes beyond, like many, many tools can allow other creators to create their own tools. I think it's a fascinating place to be. Awesome. And, and where do you see this going next? I believe I'm right now calling our installation here GTC a generative reality. I believe we are in this new era where we will be uh, interacting with AI models in a new new creativity. Um, our take on this is our uh, AI museum, hopefully opening next year. It's called uh, yeah. Dataland. Yeah, yeah. I hope that in there we will be able to interact with these uh, AI characters, uh, new worlds, smell them, touch them, taste them. I believe it's a new world that is happening, and I'm fascinating to imagine this. The last question is, students and, and children that want to learn and become part of this, this movement that's taking place, where, where do you recommend they go ex get inspired? So the most exciting places are tools at the moment that exist. Like I think, I hope they can try and experiment with them uh, from like run WayML to like Stability AI to like Mid Journey to ChatGPT, Gemini, Club. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all these that exist ecosystem, I hope they can experiment with them to really understand them because that understanding Will, will clear the problematic like imaginations, but also there are like lots of open source now free, uh, lots of lectures just on YouTube and beyond. I'm sure they can find many resources, and I hope they can learn more and be curious about the systems. Rafiq, thank you so much for being here and being a part of GTC 2024. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I'm grateful to be here and for, excited for the future. And for everyone, thank you for watching. Be sure to explore more sessions here at GTC. It's an amazing event. Thank you so much.